Hello everyone and welcome again to our series The Scholar Way. In this series, as many of you know, we are studying um, very deep and profound uh, cultural and refinite studies uh, regarding especially um, advanced techniques and uh, cultural studies That's like we want to do today. is We want to talk about katana and the cleaning of the katana. We have received many questions and many people interested on, on how we how can we clean our katanas and take care of them since they are delicate and special um, items for us. Um, for today we will need uh, a kit for cleaning and obviously a katana. As you can see this katana, before cleaning it, uh, let me explain a little bit of it. It's a buke tsukuri katana. Uh, it's um, the katanas um, that were made after the 1530 uh, year in the ancient Japan, two of them are two mountains are the most common and most uh, um, valued values uh, katanas: the Jindachi Tsukuri and the Buke Tsukuri. Jindachi is an older an older one which has two rings here. Probably you have seen them on the movies, on ancient Japan movies. They you normally were worn with two rings in the court. Uh, Put here, and this was the a later one, the bouquet, which was going on the hip, put on the hip and in the shash. Are the most valued. After after these katanas came the shiraha katanas and military katanas of the Meiji Restoration, which are more modern. Uh, today uh, we wanna we'll be using this one. Uh, it's many. The important, uh, or a big part of the beauty of a katana, it's on on the blade, on the flawless blade and uh, pure beauty and clean blade. One of the things one must never do with a katana is to touch the blade with the hand. Uh, apart for, from being uh, unpolite and not considerate, it can rust your katana and it can spoil and, and ruin the, the blade. So you must never, never, never touch it. Uh, normally, uh, if you live in a salty environment, maybe close to the beach or, or places with a wet environment, you must clean your katana more or less uh, one, 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 once a month. Uh, if you live on the mountains, you can do it uh, every three months. This is the recommended way. And you must be very careful with your katana because it's really, really difficult to find people artisans that can't polish your katana if you live outside Japan, even in the, U in the US. It's really difficult nowadays to find uh, someone that can fix a broken katana or a rusted katana. So um, you have to take uh, very, very seriously the, 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 the curse you must, you must do to your, to your weapon, to your loved weapon. Let's go to the, uh, to the cleaning. One of the things you must pay attention is the way you're opening it. You must not open it this way, like this, or um, maybe these, or, or other unconsiderate ways. The proper way to do it is you put it in front of you, you do a little first movement, not really strong, to, to release the habaki, and then you release the saya. The blade is, is, uh, is fixed, is locked, and you move this part. This is done this way, not to ruin the blade, and not to ruin the saya. We're gonna leave the saya here, we will leave, I'll leave it here, and we're gonna put the katana here. Put the mune to our side, okay. Apart from the katana, we're gonna need these items. This is a kit for cleaning the katana. We're gonna need the uchiko, which is this thing here. It's a powder uh, used to to clean the the old oil and even mm, uh, little rests of 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 dirt that can be after you've done tamishigiri or you have used your katana. So it's it's to, to clean the, the, the all the dirt and, and old oil. You need the oil, the, the new oil you're gonna put 
which is called Choji Abura, and you're gonna need a cloth. This cloth, which is called Nuguigami, can be a paper, but it can be substituted by a tissue, a cotton tissue, some people do it. It must be some fine, fine uh, cloth, because if not, you, can't, you could ruin your, your, your polished blade. It is important that you use uh, really good oil. It cannot be a uh, uh, weight, uh, big or heavy weight uh, oil, because heavy weight oil will, will get some dust, and the dust will, will collect in your shaya and will ruin it. You must use, use proper, uh, especially if it's made in Japan, uh, light and fine oil in order to, to get good results and get your, your katana in a good state all the time. So, let's go. Let's go then to the cleaning of the katana. The first step is using the nui, nugui gami. We're gonna clean the blades. We're gonna do two movements. Normally, we do two movements. You have to be very careful, not just for respect, but because it's a dangerous weapon, and it will be sharp. And if you've been practicing tamishigiri, or maybe it has uh, some dirt, you can do a third one. The objective of this, of this phase is to, to take out the oil and all the dirt. After the first step, we're gonna pass the second step, which is placing the uchiko in the blade. Uchiko is this powder here. Um, some uchiko, when they are new, uh, maybe they are not releasing the powder, so you don't have to be afraid. You just uh, hit on the blade a couple, three, three times until it starts releasing the powder. Talking about the powder, it, is, uh, it, is, it has to be a special powder. It cannot be a normal talcum, because a normal talcum uh, can be abrasive for your blade and it can main, make some scratches on your blade. And uh, it could ruin the, the, the beauty of, of the blade. So it has to be uh, made of, of two stones, which are called Hasuya and Jisuja. This, these stones is, are actually a byproduct, a subproduct of, of the, the, the very same uh, product used to, to the polish of the, of the blade when it is being made. So it's the right, the right, um, the right uh, product in, in order not to scratch the blade and especially to take all the wares that can rust the blade and, and ruin it. The way to, to apply it, you take the sword, and you have to do it three, uh, three steps. First step, on one side, you have to do it on, on normal spaces. Then you go for the money. And then you go over the other side. After doing this, you have to clean it before applying the oil. Take the cloth again and we clean it properly in order to take out all the dirt and oil that could be still on your katana after the first cleaning. It's really important that you do it properly and it is really really important as well that you don't touch your katana right now because it's absolutely free of oil. If you have not to do to touch it with your hand before, even more important is not to do it right now. We're gonna head now for the third and final step with a new cloth. We're gonna apply some oil. 
you have to use proper oil, not uh, heavyweight oil, not too thick oil, because um, it uh, it attracts the dust, and the dust will collect and will will rest on the saya and will ruin it. You have to use proper lightweight, especially if it's made in Japan, oil, uh, in order to to apply a fine fine application of it. As well, it's important not to put too much oil, especially on the part of the habaki. So you have to, to be calibrated on this, on this step. We apply some oil. And we proceed to apply it to our katana. Be especially careful in the hawaki. I'm gonna apply with the other side. Just leave a fine layer. Not too much. Now your katana is curved and protected against, against wet in the air. So thank you very much for being with us and uh, pay attention to our, to our following videos. We are working on this kind of, of interesting uh, themes and, uh, and curves and cultural studies and from a scholar uh, way and a really profound uh, study of every aspect of the cultural of the season uh, of the season uh, people thank you very much and see you again